Hello everybody. We're going to give you a book review today. Yeah, Frank loaned me this book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, by Richard P. Feynman, the uh, Nobel Prize winning physicist. Uh, for anybody out there who's curious, and I mean the kind of curious that makes you wonder how you make a seamless aluminum can, uh, you need to read this book. It's really a lot of fun. Um, he, of course, won the Nobel Prize for uh, Physics and worked on the atomic bomb and uh, was just one of the instrumental people in opening physics up really to being a, an, an acceptable profession because it was mostly just uh, a bunch of guys r running around talking above everybody's heads before he came along and he made it interesting and fun and this book is, is so great it, it tells all the anecdotal uh, stories about how uh, when he was at Los Alamos and the things he did there uh, working on the atomic bomb he is the only person as a matter of fact uh, that he knows of that actually viewed the Trinity explosion without any glasses. <laughs> and he tells you all about how he did that and why. Um, he does stuff like, he tries to, he'll see ants walking across the floor and you'll try to figure out, well, do they really know how to get to the food and can they pass that on to the next ant? Well, I, I know people uh, like Richard Feynman, uh, people who will look at something and wonder why the curiosity that I don't know if you can even teach that Frank I think it's uh, really just ingrained or in somebody's DNA and unfortunately I think we're losing our curiosity as a society and maybe maybe it's a worldwide epidemic of people <laughs> who just accept what's put in front of them of course uh, you know his dad planted a lot of that uh, it's absolutely passed on uh, in, a, in a teaching fashion there's no question about that but also there are people who you can teach them all day and they have no interest in knowing about things so you have to have that combination of natural curiosity and then someone who will open your mind up to all these really miraculous little uh, quirks of, of nature and quirks exactly. of human beings that really make you, you know, make you who you are later on are, are, are really confused by like government bureaucracies and stuff like that. Right. And when you have people in power who basically are in power solely because they know how to get there and they have to interact with, with minds like Feynman's, there's a real, there's a real battle there all the time. Because Feynman really wants to know the truth, and a lot of people just want to be right. You know, I'd made a comment on somebody's video about uh, the mixing the, of the paint when he went in. And the painter was, he was... T uh, he went in to, he, he thought it would be interesting. He liked to talk to common people. Right. And he went in and, and he started speaking. I think it was at a lunch counter or something. And he <laughs> saw a guy who was a painter, obviously, because he had paint on And he started speaking with him. And he, he said, well, it's, you know, how do you figure out what different colors and tints and stuff. He said, well, we'll take yellow, for example. I make yellow by mixing white and, and, and pink together. Red. Red together. <laughs> and and try to get paint. And Feynman goes, what? <laughs> he says, yeah, whenever I want yellow, I, I mix white and red together. <laughs> and, and Feynman's going, well, this is a professional painter. He probably, maybe there's something in the paint. So Feynman goes out and tries to duplicate that experiment. So he buys a quart of white and a quart of red. He mixes it together, and guess what? Every time he comes up with pink. Yeah, right. But he's so, so, trying to get... Uh, and he's trying to get yellow, yeah. and he says, what am I doing wrong? And so he takes it back to the painter, and he says, look, I've been doing this, you know, mixing this red and white together, and all I come up with pink. And the guy says, well, let me see it. And he starts mixing, and sure enough, he comes up with pink, too. And the guy finally says, oh, you know what? I kind of add a little yellow here to get a tint to it. <laughs> so actually, you know, Feynman knew there was a truth there, and he wanted to get to the bottom of it. And the truth was, the guy actually used yellow to make yellow. So it and you know what? Fun. We're really not making light of this book because it oh, is a, funny. It's true. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not, if you don't have that natural curiosity, and you try to read this book, you'll be bored to death. <laughs> Because the thing about the ants, where he was ferrying the ants across to the food and ferrying them back so there'd be no trail and right. trying to figure out if the ants could tell him, wait till the ferry comes and then you'll be able to get to the food or something. There's one story in the book about um, when uh, Feynman was at Los Alamos and he was uh, breaking into people's safes. Ron and I, when we were having coffee a while ago, uh, he had commented that, uh, you know, that's just the way people are. Uh, when you think that something is really complicated, you're looking for a complicated answer when it really isn't that complicated, right, Ron? Yeah, that's true. There was a, a situation where, well, Feynman, being at Los Alamos, he, he was always going in the offices of all these high-ranking people who had secrets locked up in their file cabinets. And almost every single time, Feynman was able to get into the file cabinet because they would always leave the last number of the combination right there. So he knew if the lock was open, wherever he looked on the combination, that was the last number. And he would kind of extrapolate the first two numbers from that. And then one day he hears a story about a guy, there was a really difficult kind of lock that uh, 
that I guess the, the commander of the base had on the safe there, and no one could figure out how to get into it. And there was a locksmith that they had on the base who came in, and he opened the thing up in like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's less than 30 minutes or mm -hmm. something like that. And everybody just thought this was the most incredible safe cracker that they'd ever heard of. So Feynman decides that he wants to meet this guy, but he doesn't want to do it overtly. He wants to kind of get to know the guy, and over a period of time, just have him open up and tell him the secrets about how he opened that lock. So Feynman sees the guy working in his shop one night and he says hello and then a couple nights later he says a few more words and then pretty soon they're having coffee and then pretty soon they're getting to be buddies and finally one day Feynman says wow that was a great story about that uh, incredibly difficult safe that, that you opened up um, were there any particular tricks to that he said no a lot of people just use the safe combination that comes from the factory. I tried that and it opened it. <laughs> so sometimes when you think somebody's really, really slick, the bottom line is they're just kind of seeking, you know, like water, seeking its own level, the easiest way to get to there. Well, I was just saying, Frank, that, that a really, really important characteristic of human beings down through, down through the ages have been the... the the de having the desire to know the truth instead of just wanting to be right. Because if you want to know the truth, you don't care who's right. You just want to get to the bottom of something. And unfortunately, particularly in our political system, most people just want to prove their point rather than know what the real facts are. And that's a dangerous thing, particularly in a world where facts and, fa and, and the, uh, the ways to prove them are going to become more and more important as the, as the years go by. This is the kind, this, this guy here is the kind of intellect, really, that you want to see more of in the world. So if you have a, a situation where you have a kid or a friend or anything that's a little bit curious, man, just continue to push that curiosity because you never know what might come out of it in the long run. And the title of this book, in this book review, I'll just kind of hold it up here and you can, uh, you can see it. Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman, by <laughs> Richard P. Feynman. That's right. One of the funniest books that I've ever read, and now probably one of the funniest books that Ron has read. Thank you, Ron. You bet. Take care.